Funding for this program is made possible by Burke Nursery and Garden Center in Burke, Virginia. You'll find trees and shrubs, perennials and annuals, water garden supplies, house plants, and bird and gardening supplies. Burke Nursery also provides landscape, plant diagnostic, and installation services, and much more. For more information, you can check out their website or call 703-323-1188. Welcome to Gardening with Burke Nursery, the show where we help you grow your garden, increase the curb appeal of your yard, and share information on all plants. I'm your host, Misty Kacharis, the horticulturalist at Burke Nursery and Garden Center. I have a lot of fun this time of year. My perennials are blooming, the trees have leafed out, and the birds are raising their young as well as their voices in a joyous tune. For all of this beauty around me, I can't help but want to increase it by planting annuals and even more perennials in containers and placing those flower pots around my home. Whether I put them on my deck, under trees where the roots can make it too difficult to plant, or even in my garden where I want that pop of fancy. I just like adding more color and plants to my garden. What's great about planting in containers is that it doesn't matter where you live or how small of a space you have, you can always increase the beauty of your space by planting outdoor flower pots that express your fun side. While planting traditional flower pots is a lot of fun, I'd like to start by showing you an outdoor planting container display that I created, as well as a couple more that others created. So the way to begin with the planting container that I created is first of all, get yourself a little sand pail. Now this sand pail can be gotten at any store and this one is just a little inexpensive plastic sand pail. I could have, if I wanted, put holes in the bottom of this pail, but I chose not to put holes in this. And so instead, because it has no holes in it, what I need to do to make sure that my plants will grow properly is just take some form of rock. And in this case, these are rock marble chips and you can get these at any store that sells gardening supplies or any store that sells even um, uh, other kinds of supplies. And you just put those, I didn't think about all the sound that this would make, but basically you put these in the bottom. And what that does is that helps with the watering. Then the next thing that I do is that I take and I like to have a little horticultural charcoal because horticultural charcoal helps with the distribution of the water. It helps so that the water doesn't get this foul odor or anything, but you just need to be a little cautious when you put in the horticultural charcoal because the charcoal is extremely powdery. So you want to make sure, and you'll see this you can just see the powder kind of elevate as you put it in, but you just put in a little bit, not that much of the horticultural charcoal. And then, of course, the next thing to do is we'll put in the soil. And since what I am going to be planting in this pot is just a little bacopa, then that means that I can use any kind of potting soil. Some people like to put succulents in these pots, and if that's the case, then you want a succulent soil. But if not, then just any potting mix will do. And here is a little bacopa. And the reason that I want the bacopa, it's what I call a plant that flows over. So the next thing is just to put in your soil mix and then just put in the bacopa and then loosen the roots 
and just put it in the pot. So it's very easy. And what's great about this is that you can also do this with your kids if you want to do this with your kids or you could do it as a group activity. And what will happen as this plant grows is that it'll just cascade over the top. And what's really neat about this particular, uh, this particular sand pail is that because it has the translucency to it, when I pour water in here, I actually will be able to tell just how much water this has. If you want to use something fancier, there are also these pale pots that you can purchase. And these pale pots actually do have the drainage holes. So that that way you can still put in if you want some rocks at the base, but you don't have to. I do recommend though, when you pot with drainage holes to put in um, coffee filters so that the holes won't get plugged up. And then the other prop that you need is an S hook and a trellis. And if you look at this picture here, you will see the display that I created. Basically what I did was I took the pots, I took an S hook, put it at the handle of the pot, and then I just hung the pots up on trellis. And what's nice about this is that this one happens to be in my garden where you have all these gorgeous azaleas that bloom in the springtime and they leaf out, but no blooms in the spring, summer. So this gives me the pop of color in the summer. Now, if you have a deck, what you can do with this trellis is you can get a huge pot, fill the large pot with sand, and then you can stick the entire trellis in the sand if you want. And they have it. It can be on your deck. It can be in an area where you have a sidewalk, or as I like to have it, I like it in my garden. Another fun vertical display that you can either do on your deck or you can do in the garden or you can do on a patio involves pots. Now here I have a miniature version of the display you'll see in the picture after I finish showing you this. And as a matter of fact, I like this miniature display so much that what I'm going to do is I will actually put it in a pot and put it on my deck. So what you want is you need pots this time, and this is critical, you need pots that have the drainage hole. That's very, very, very important. And you need a stake. And the stake needs to be one where the size will fit, where, where the hole in the pot will actually fit on the stake. And so basically, you can use different colored pots if you want. You can use the same color pot if you want. You can use different styles. But this is what you will be doing. You'll be taking these pots and you'll be stacking them. And you're stacking them in a way that's horizontal. Then after you stack them, what you'll do is you'll take whatever plants that you want. And in this case, this plant is an Elysium. It's an annual plant, and I just like it because it just has these sweet little, little teeny flowers. And then what you'll do is basically, you'll just pot the plants, and there you have it. And like I said, I ended up liking this so much that I'm actually going to put this in a small pot and then I may go with some different flowers, but this is what I call a stacked pot display. And if you look at the picture, you will see that this picture comes from outdoors. The pots used in this picture were terracotta pots. They were 12 inch 
terracotta pots. The pole was actually really put into the ground very strongly. And again, if you're going to use a pole, you need to make certain that the pole is not wider than the holes. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And it looks pretty if you could get some of your flowers that stand upright at the top and some of the flowers that cascade over towards the bottom, or you can use all cascading flowers and it will just look phenomenal. Now, the next display that I want you to see, I only have pictures of because it's a little too much to bring in here and show you what it looks like. But I went to visit a friend years ago and we walked around her neighborhood. She lives in a condo and very, very small little land in that condo. But in the back is where you can park your cars if you have cars or also another, basically an access road if necessary. And these people decided that they wanted to have plants and they wanted a little forest garden. So what they did in the first one is what I call a front view. You'll see that you have the trees and then you'll see that they took some, some wood from, probably from some woodland somewhere, recycled the wood and they put that around and then they put pots inside and they also have a potted hydrangea. And then the other picture is a picture to, of the side. And the reason I took that picture was so that you could see that indeed these are in containers and these are thriving. They have been there for years. They're getting the right watering, they're getting the right nourishment, they're getting fertilized two or three times during the growing season, and they look wonderful. So this is part of what you can consider. What I'd like to do now is move the show into what I call the fillers, thrillers, and spillers. And actually it said thrillers, fillers, and spillers. And that's your more traditional pots. So when you look at this next picture that you see, this picture is more of the traditional flower pots, traditional flower containers that you can see either around your yard or on a stand as this one is, or on your deck. And this one we like to call thrillers, spill, uh, fillers, and spillers. And why? Well, because the first is the height in the center, and that is your thriller. The next one are your plants that are more horizontal. They come up a little bit, but they don't grow very, very tall. Those are your filler plants. And then finally, there are plants that cascade over the edges, and those are the spillers. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to introduce you to my perennial filler pail or perennial filler pot. I didn't realize this until recently, but I have actually been doing gardening with Burke Nursery for five years. And about four years ago, I did a show on how to separate liriope and I planted it in a pot. And at that time I said liriope can actually be used as a thriller as the elevated plant in a pot. What I didn't think of when I did it then was that the liriope, because it's a perennial and an evergreen perennial, meaning it stays green year round, just fell in love with the soil in this pot, enjoys it, and it's now become the pot that is my go-to. And I like to change it out every time. So what I do is, the first thing is I think of what type of fillers do I want around my thriller? And in this case, these are vincas. So basically, and what's actually neat about this, sometimes I will plant them in here, but other times, depending on the size of the pot that I'm using, I'll sometimes just leave them in the pot and then put them in this larger pot. And so that's one way that you can do this. 
Now, the next is the spiller portion. There are so, so many different plants. One of the most common here is the creeping jenny. And again, depending on my mood, I may just, or the pot size, I may just put it in the pot as is. I may not take it out of the pot. I may not plant it. Or another common, and this one looks like it's erect, but it actually does cascade over, is the potato vine. So that's another common spiller that you have. Or maybe the Lysimachia, which this one's Persian chocolate. So there you have it. And didn't take me a long time. So this is one way that you can create a thriller filler spiller pot without a lot of work. So now what I'd like to talk about are the other types of plants, in addition to the liriope, that you can use as a thriller, as well as some other potential fillers and spillers that you can use in pots. So as you know, I use the liriope for my thriller in my pot, and being a perennial, I don't need to replace that, but there are a lot of different other thrillers that you can use, and I have four here that I would just like to introduce you to if you haven't seen them before. The first one, this is the most common one, and this is the one that we call, it's a Dracaena, but you'll also see it called Spikes. So usually when you go to a nursery or a garden center and you ask for Spikes, this is what they'll show you. And Sometimes this actually becomes a perennial if it's warm enough. Other times it'll die back. Another one that I like that really is a neat thriller is this box fern. This is a fern that may or may not come back. It just makes an incredible statement. But because it's so large, you may not even go with the fillers. You may just go right to the spillers and have a two-type pot instead of the three-type pot. Then another one here is the um, Bulbine, and I always have trouble pronouncing this, Fruticence. And this has the grass here, and then what it has, it has these spiky flowers. And so first you have the little seed heads that are actually starting to turn into flowers. And then you have little star-shaped flowers. And this can make a very nice statement. And you can have some fillers around here that are yellow flowers or some fillers that are purple flowers. You have options, as I like to say, choices. And then finally, one of my favorites. It's actually a annual plant called an angelonia. And a lot of people actually mistake this for a snapdragon, but the Angelonia likes full sun, unlike the snapdragon, which prefers a little bit more shade. And the flowers are so similar that they just have this little face, but there's a little beard that the Angelonia has, or somebody likes to call it little angel wings that the snapdragon doesn't. The snapdragon's flowers look more like uh, like jaws, the, the snap, hence the name snapdragon. And the angelonia can also come in white as well as purple, and it can come in a lavender, which is what this is. So you have options. So this is actually one of my favorite thrillers. So when you consider fillers, these are the plants that don't get too tall and they basically are there between the thriller, the big tall one, and the spiller, the ones that are on the side. And there are so many different things that you can use. My rule of thumb when it comes to fillers is to get the ones that go with the thriller. So if you have a spike, that can go in shade or full sun, which means then I can use something like the Vinca Minor. 
or if you want to go with that box fern that you saw earlier, then you can go with something that works in the shade. And so the melampodiums, these little yellow flowers here, can do either sun or shade. Or if you want, you can even go with what I call the Dusty Miller. And the Dusty Miller doesn't really flower, but it just has a nice interest. And some Dusty Millers are perennial, meaning they'll come back year after year. And other Dusty Millers are annual, which means after the season is over, they basically uh, say goodbye, I'm done. And there are so many flowers out there that fit in the filler category. My recommendation is choose your thriller first, plant and then walk around with that thriller and then see what flowers will go with that thriller. Now, the next one that I really want to spend time talking about are the spillers. There are so many spillers out there. And a lot of them, again, work in both full sun, they work in shade. Others definitely are full sun. Others don't need a lot of watering. Still others need a lot of watering. So you want to make sure, again, when you're planting these, that you plant these with the Thriller and the other plants that all have the same watering requirement and that all have the same uh, sun requirement as well. Otherwise, you'll have the pot that's growing fabulously, half of it in one location, not so fabulously the other half. So I've mentioned a couple of these already, but the one thing about spillers is it's best if you actually pot them last, because that way you get the artistic vision of where you want that to spill over and how you may want that to fill out the pot by spilling over. The one that I use a lot is the Vinca vine. And the Vinca vine will grow and grow and grow. It is a perennial. As a matter of fact, this one is a variegated one. And the variegated ones are the ones that have the green with the white, and they tend to be used more for pots than the ones that you plant in the ground. The vinca vine is also known as periwinkle. And I'll tell you, they like it when I plant them in my pot because I have had these vines literally go eight feet long. You don't have to let them go that long. You can just prune them just below where the leaves are and they'll thrive. So that's one that's a really nice spiller to use. Another spiller that kind of works, but I always laugh with this one, it's called a purslane. And purslanes are actually edible plants and they make great spillers. However, the minor drawback is squirrels love them. I can't keep them in my pots because what happens is that squirrels like the taste. They enjoy chewing on them. They enjoy eating them all. The other thing is you can't tell in this light, but it has some really beautiful flowers. And the reason you can't tell in this light, this is one of those plants that when it's in an area that's a little on the dark side, it starts closing its buds. So it wasn't out in the sunlight enough for the buds to open up so that you could see the flower. And then finally, another favorite of mine is the, um, I already showed you this one, but I'm gonna show this to you again. This is the Lysimachia. This one is a chocolate color. This one is, we call this Sunrise Walking because it just has a lot of pretty colors to it. And then of course, another spiller is 
the English ivy. Yes, you don't want to plant it in the ground in your yard because it can become invasive. But in a pot, it makes a beautiful, wonderful statement. So there are so many ways you can increase the beauty of your yard by adding pots filled with your favorite annuals or perennials. Whether you decide on a more eclectic approach or the more traditional approach, you know, it doesn't matter. It only matters if the pots you create express your fun side and bring you joy. I'm your host, Misty Kacharis. If you have any plant or gardening questions, just contact me at misty at burknursery.com. Thank you for spending your time with me here at Gardening with Burke Nursery. I'm looking forward to helping you grow your garden. Funding for this program is made possible by Burke Nursery and Garden Center in Burke, Virginia. You'll find trees and shrubs, perennials and annuals, water garden supplies, house plants, and bird and gardening supplies. Burke Nursery also provides landscape, plant diagnostic, and installation services, and much more. For more information, you can check out their website or call 703-323-1188.